Sunday is always a prep day for me. Got a big day today. Got quite a few things to tick off, a lot of errands to run, and of course plan for the week. I'm just heading to Blue Water right now. I'm gonna pick up a few things in preparation for the wedding. Last week was just as busy. I had Ibby here for a couple of days. He tried to get me on decaf Yorkshire tea, but I wasn't having any of it. I think I turned him into a, a coffee guy now. Uh, we have Abdu flying over. He's coming over to my coming over for my wedding. I'm really looking forward to that. And we should have time to get some work done as well. So it's going to be good, but a busy period. Nevertheless, you still have to stay sharp. You have to be able to deal with the chaos. So I just finished up in Blue Water, got a few things, I ended up in Zara and getting loads of things I didn't even expect to get, but some nice little bits for the summer. Joe in the juice, by the way. The carrot ginger apple. I've already finished my avo shake. So if you're ever enjoying the juice, try an avo shake. Avocado, it's got some dates in it, thank me later. But I've got to head back and pick up my shirt and my trousers as they're being tailored at the minute. Jacket's already being tailored right now. Shoes are sorted. Everything else is ready to go for the wedding, so I'm gonna head back now, make some lunch, plan the week ahead. I've got a very, very busy week ahead, and uh, business as usual. Right, so what are you looking forward to in terms of funding for um, this, this week's webinar? So the webinar this week, we're gonna be going over the plan for this, this year. So starting with the migration, then with the Six Figure Club, how people can scale up. And then, well, personally, I'm looking forward to the yacht party at the end of the year in November when all of this is put into, into place. So I've just had the pool open. Still needs to be cleaned, so it's a bit of a procedure. So just getting all this area jet washed, the pool needs to you know, have a few chemicals and then they come back and clean it. But just kind of starting the prep work for the summer. And then we'll uh, move into the gym area. So the gym's looking a little bit bare right now, but I just want to run you through the transformation. So doing a, a few different things up here, still got the Sonos speakers, we've got the, the TV up there, you can barely see it, but uh, everything is good in that front. All these white bits you're seeing is essentially, when this was installed, we had all the mirrors in. But because of the expansion, we had brackets on that allowed for, you know, of course, wood is, is contracting and expanding, so it puts pressure on it. But it just was too much and then it started to crack the mirrors, so I eventually had to get rid of all of them. So I've got new mirrors coming and a new way to hang all of them. And then I'm just going to do a few, a few new things, a few new bits of equipment will come into play. And then we'll have a lovely view out of the pool once everything's set up and all the, you know, sun lounges are out etc it's going to be a really nice summer especially with the euros as well so looking forward to the summer Ibi, so let's get into the recovery plan it's like simple metrics because i want this to be practical and then if anyone doesn't have a recovery plan uh, whatsoever you can ask us questions we can put one in place it's actually very simple where do you want to dig into it Ibi? so <clears throat> the best way to get out of drawdown is you need to understand prevention is better than cure as a as a way of your trading, right? So the reason I say that is when people are in drawdown, their sole focus naturally without realizing is to get out of drawdown, obviously get out of drawdown, but think about this mind frame for a minute. If your primary focus is to get out of drawdown, the way that you're gonna look at the markets, the trades that you're gonna be looking at are gonna be going in congruence with that frame of mind. So make sure you watch it, understand the golden number and really apply it to your life, to your trading returns and be serious about it because that's one thing that's gonna help you build a buffer for when you go full-time or to realize what your full-time figure is. Otherwise, you're just trading and you have no idea what you're doing. So if you wanna talk on balance, this is my, my view on it. This is what I've learned over, over the years of just understanding how to deal with it. Often when we're searching for balance, what we're looking for is, is an easier route, right? Because we feel unbalanced. Maybe you're someone who has kids, maybe you've got uh, studying as well as a job all these things come into play and your initial instinct is to think right 
how can I how can I get some balance in my life? But the reality is, it depends how much success that you want, and it really does boil down to that. You're going to be unbalanced so much of your life, and you need to remember. You need to ask yourself the question first and foremost: How successful do you want to be? Because I've never met or I've never studied successful people, and seen that a lot of these individuals are balanced all the time. Like that does that's not really congruent within their story, is it? So it shows you, in order to get what you want, you have to be unbalanced a lot of the time, and you've got to be very comfortable with that. I think the biggest threat to your progression is if you keep searching for it. You've got to be comfortable in the chaos. The best way that you can deal with scenarios like this is to have better communication with the people that you're trying to explain balance from. So for example, let's say uh, your partner feels like they're being neglected or your kids feel like they're being neglected. I think the best way to deal with these scenarios is better communication and then just be more diligent with your time. For example, if you're not spending as much time with your partner, well then guess what? You communicate, by the way, this is why I'm doing this or I'm gonna be busy for this period of time. Oftentimes we feel all over the place is because we lack the communication with our loved ones and we don't communicate it. I think it's a huge advantage if you've got a whole bunch of things going on because then you become way more intentional with your time. So we are back at Blue Water again for another Joe in the Juice and of course to pick up my shirt. So I've got to grab my shirt, I've got to grab a pocket square as well, a few other bits and it's just one of those very busy days. I'll be working up until probably 11, maybe even midnight by the time we finished off, but through the chaos you have to enjoy it. So we're back with another Joe in the Juice, Avo Shake. If you haven't tried it already, you definitely need to get down there. I would literally come all the way down here just for this. But I've got everything sorted for the wedding, successful trip, been really efficient, got to get back, got such a busy day, so I want to crack on with things. And just overall, this week has been decent. Even the, the funding webinar that we had uh, with the funded traders, it was absolutely phenomenal. It's a very, very clear plan. We spoke a lot about drawdown. I may do a separate video on that in the future. Drawdown is so important. You learning how to recover out of that and not just blowing accounts, not blowing personal accounts, not blowing funded accounts. It's imperative, otherwise it, it messes with your psyche. So this was the reaction that I was talking about. We've tapped into this area nicely on the daily here, but it's such a quick reaction. Retesting the back end of the structure. Wasn't able to get an entry, but now we've achieved what I was talking about. So there is the hook point. So we've tapped above that. I didn't want it to go too far away, which is good. It's a volatility spike. Of course, the one hour still got 16 minutes left. However, I would have wanted to get in on the lower time frame. It's just one of those ones where there's no entry. This is not the type of structure where you'd set a limit order either. So with this, you just have to wait for it to develop. At least it's done what it needs to do. It's washed all those orders out. Now I'll be looking for a continuation on the one hour and the 15. So permitting that we're not sitting on that low, we'll be good to go. I'll be looking for a continuation around here. So the same game plan as normal, just ideally we pull back into this sort of region and then we're looking for that trade. So same trade idea is in motion. Right, so we are midday Friday, very busy day for me. Got lots of things to get done. Had a productive morning so far. Couldn't film too much there, it was just focus mode. But we're being productive, we're getting things done. We are going into the Monday Night Live as well. So every single week I do regular analysis, you know, getting people ready for the week ahead. But in this particular week, it is going to be the Monday Live webinar instead of a pre recorded piece of content, but I'm looking forward to it because we're going into the extreme accountability. This is an initiative that we set for Q2, and I firmly believe this is gonna bring the most out of people, and we're already seeing it. It's no coincidence why we're having a lot more people now pass on the fund, even through slightly more trickier market conditions. But yeah, finished up now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on the road. So I completely forgot to mention, so this morning, I was picking up this. So I'm in the new, the new smart car, I had, I've had one for years and probably one of the best cars I've had. So it's a full electric smart car. This is just a brand new one. I was essentially just swapping out my old one for the new one. I can't explain to you how convenient it is having this. And you might think, oh, why do you, why do you want a smart car? Why not this? I have other cars anyway. This is more so, if I want to go get my hair cut, I jump in here. If I want to go get eggs from the farm, I jump in here. If I want to go to places where I know the parking is tight, I go from here. If I want to go to the gym, I go in this. It's almost like a, a runaround cut. It's like a little go-kart. So yeah, don't knock it. So I picked that up this morning. Another thing ticked off just for convenience. And I've got to drop something off to the post office. I've got a call with Ibby later. I've got quite a few things and I'll be working probably till about 11 p.m. But I knew this quarter as a whole. And then of course, 
wedding coming up, so all systems go. So then you would set a limit order and then before the next candle open, that's a more like aggressive entry, yep. I'd say. Way more aggressive, but very, very accurate when I've tested it. He, 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 he's qualified to say that. Well. This is why it's never made sense to me whatsoever. There's been that, that narrative going around that traders blame their psychology for a lack of TA. Yeah. It's never made sense to me. And I was thinking, who is this? It's, it's almost like the bubble. So if anyone is of this opinion, they're usually in some kind of bubble. That, do you know what that does show me? It shows me the audience they're interacting with are not serious traders. No, no. So if you take a small portion of traders and all of them are blaming their psychology and they've got like really poor technicals where they've not done their work, like someone who's generally not proficient and they're like they're blaming their emotions. Don't ver yeah. I've ne I don't come across the. We've never come across no. those traders. That's like no. saying that these traders are self-aware enough to know that it's their emotional state. Like the emotional regulation, the EQ, right? That comes over a period of time. Like no one comes into trading understanding fully and really grasping how important it is to regulate yeah. your emotions in those right times. So the probability yeah. of a new trader who's got poor TA saying, it's my emotions, is at the same time, you're also saying that trader is really self-aware to even know it's his emotions. That's why that doesn't make sense. Right, so we're back with another trip to Blue Water. I promise you I do work. I do actually get things done, but Joe in the Juice is calling, so we need to get up there. But seriously, I'm grabbing a jar of juice. That's not why I'm going up there. So there's been a little error on a recent purchase. So it's something for the wedding, just a little pocket square. So I need to go back up to Reese and my keyboard has malfunctioned again. So I've ordered a replacement. So I'm gonna go grab that. And I'll just grab some food while I'm there as well. It's currently Friday night. So I'm just, I've got to nip out for about an hour and a bit and then I'm gonna be back and then just full steam ahead. I'm gonna be working through the night. It's just, it's just one of these periods that's full steam ahead. So we are back guys, just about to head into the office again, get some work done. I'll be in here probably for the next couple of hours, finish off some analysis, and then it's gonna be a good end to the week. Don't think I've missed one Friday night in over 10 years. You've got to ask yourself how badly you really want this. Your success is gonna be directly correlated between the level of sacrifice that you make. You can't allow to, complacency to creep in. People often ask me, why do you still do the Friday nights? Friday nights is almost a level of humility that I need to go, right, let's remember what got me here in the first place and let's make sure that I continue to do that. What's interesting to me is if you look at traders, you look at business people or any success whatsoever, it's the reason why this happens in sports. It's the reason why you're most likely to concede after you win or you're the most vulnerable after you score a goal or you win is because it's within the human psychology to just get complacent when things are going well. If you want to be a completely different breed of animal, you want to be a completely different beast, and guess what? You have to think differently, you have to behave differently. Somebody once said, if you took all the money in the world, divided it up equally among everybody, it would soon all be back in the same pockets. Incredible. Success is something you attract, not something you pursue. Success is looking for a good place to stay. So instead of going after it, you work on yourself, personal development. So you have to put things in place to avoid complacency to, to keep in. I don't allow it to creep in. I do not allow complacency to keep in. I don't need to be here on a Friday night, but I'm here every single Friday night for the last 10 years. What's time now? Right, so it's 25 to 11. 25 to 11, I'll be in here probably for another hour. Sometimes I'll finish up at 12. I'll still be up before 6 a.m. And I'm sharp, I'm ready to go. I'm getting on with things, I'm moving forward. Even though I've got my shit figured out. So the question I have for you is, what does your life look like in three to five years from now if you continue on the same path you are on right now. Same attitude, same work ethic, same sacrifices that you're making. Are you doing things when it's convenient or are you doing things when it's inconvenient? Like generally sit there and you can even write this in the comments, write how old you are right now. You could be 20, you could be 25. If you just continue doing the same behavior, the same attitude, the same work ethic, the same level of intensity that you're going at of life right now, if you've genuinely done this for the next three to five years, what do you think your life would look like? because life will favor the hard work. Forget about working smart, it's a whole bunch of bullshit that can come after, and even when you are working smart, you should always be working hard. I'm gonna do three things every day. I'm gonna to commit to them, I'm gonna do them well, I'm gonna do them to the best of my ability, and every single week, 
I'm going to check in with those three things. Right? You're going to have over 20 goals ticked off every single week that you can look at and go, yeah, I've done this with intensity. Only then and only then when you can hold your head up high and say, I commit to it and I get it done and there is zero trace of me not doing the things that I said I was going to do, that's when you can go, right, I'm going to do five a day. And you have to do five a day. Build your way up. Incremental growth.